In a previous video, we talked about leak locating from a tracer gas tank in the field. If you are using tracer gas to leak locate from the central office, there are a few things to keep in mind. Tanks in the central office go flat quickly because the flow rates are generally higher. You need to be extra careful that your tracer gas tank is not flat by the time you get to leak locating. Here are a few tips and tricks that we use to help get the job done. First, we need to identify the highest flowing cable. Before we can take our readings, it is important that all of our distribution panels are set to feed the cables with 10 PSI. This should read 10 PSI while the panel is flowing, not while the flow is shut off. Watch our video titled Air Pressure Standards for the story there. Next, we need to take a reading of our flow rater for each cable. If you have one of our System Studies legacy distribution panels, then this is a very simple task. Look for the bouncing ball in the flow rater for each cable. Read the black ball first by using the black scale on the left. If the black ball is pegged or off the scale, then read the silver ball by using the red scale on the right. The flow rate should be read from the middle of the ball. For example, it's the flow rate of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. If the silver ball is pegged, we will just call it 10 standard cubic feet per hour. Let's start our process by recording the data for all of our cables so that we can find our highest flowing cable first. From the panel, we can do a zero leak projection on this cable. Refer to our video titled Zero Leak Projection Calculation for details. It is linked in the video description. I'm going to do a quick zero leak projection on the cable we have here. In this example, our input pressure is 10 PSI. Our flow rate is 8 standard cubic feet per hour and our cable is an 1800 pair 26 gauge pulp cable which has a pneumatic resistance of 1.6. Running these calculations we have a result of 781 feet. This means that our area of search is no further than 781 feet away from our place of measurement at the distribution panel. There is no point in searching any other area out here for this particular leak because it's not going to be there. Now it's time to use some tracer gas. We will attach our tracer gas to the top valve of that particular cable on the distribution panel. We are not going to shut off flow from the dryer. Once we are hooked up, we are going to carefully regulate our flow from the tracer gas tank. Slowly roll up the pressure on the tracer gas tank until the flow rater on the panel decreases by half. Here it indicates 4 standard cubic feet per hour, which is half of our original flow rate of 8 standard cubic feet per hour. If you can get this dialed in, you will have accomplished two things. First, half of the air feeding that cable will be from the dryer, and the other half will be tracer gas from the tank. And that's enough tracer gas for leak locating. Second, if our tank goes flat in this configuration, then the dryer will automatically pick up the slack and provide all of the necessary air to maintain cable pressure and protection. Here is the most important part. Let it sit a minimum of five hours. Ideally, let the tracer gas flow overnight and do your leak locating the first thing in the morning. Of course, be mindful of your tank level on your flow rate. If your cable is flowing at a high rate and you start with a tank that's only half full, then you're at risk of having your tracer gas go flat overnight. If that happens, then you need to start over with a fresh tank of tracer gas. Now we're going to use a System Studies hydrogen detector to check the area of the zero leak projection. Refer to our video titled Hydrogen Leak Detector for details. It is linked in the video description. When leak locating in the central office, it's good to know the usual suspects so you can check those areas first. You want to first verify that the tube is actually hooked up to the cable that you are on. If you skip this step, you could be looking for tracer gas on the wrong side of the office or the wrong side of town. The easiest way to test this is to find a 3 8 inch tubing where it enters the cable at the saddle. Have your partner pinch the tube and see if the flow rate decreases at the distribution panel. If not, then you are not on the right cable. Second, we want to check the butt splice. Use your hydrogen detector all around the butt splice to check to see if the plug is missing or leaking. If possible, sniff where the cable enters the duct. Only then do we check these manholes out here. Remember, we stay within the area of our zero leak projection. In our case, the zero leak projection resulted in 781 feet, so we will only follow the cable that far from the office. You may find that with cables being removed over time, that some of these high flowing tubes will just be ventilating the vault. This will show as a pegged cable on the flow rater. Here is a quick test for this. Put your digital pressure gauge on the valve at the top of the flow rater for that cable. 
Then shut off the flow to that single cable. If the pressure on that cable drops to zero in a matter of seconds, then that tube is probably disconnected somewhere. Tubes that are attached to cables will have back pressure, and that will show as a much slower drop in pressure. When you find the tube that is blowing free in the vault, kink the tube and wrap it up, and don't forget to shut off the valve at the distribution panel. Someone may open that valve in the future and you will want that tube kinked. The pull valve at the bottom of the flow rater turns your flow on and off. On occasion, these pull valves get bumped into the closed position, and we recommend locking open these valves by slitting a small length of 3 8 inch tubing and sliding it over the valve rod. As always, if you have any questions, give us a call. You can also visit us at airtalk.com.